So why should they choose you when they interview you? Why should you be the one that when they're evaluating all the different people, you're the one that screams to them, yeah, let's take that guy. Now, I want to lay the stage for you and say, there are a lot of very competent people who you are competing with. You're not the only one who can do this job. But the question is, are you the only one who can do this job in their environment? What's going to make you the chosen one? Now, I want to look at one of the, the examples that we can look at from a lengthy interview cycle, and that's presidential politics. No, I'm not going to be talking about the current election. I want to go back in time and look at the election of Barack Obama. Senator Obama ran for office not as the most experienced possible candidate. Clearly, Senator McCain was that. Senator Obama you know, ostensibly had a year in the Senate, but most of that time he was out campaigning. So he didn't have any national experience. He didn't have any you know, foreign policy experience or economic experience. He had been a state senator you know, in Illinois who oftentimes voted present <laughs> and, you know, a background as a Harvard-trained attorney, practiced for a while. You know, you've heard the story of being a community organizer. What qualified him to be president of the United States? Now, perhaps qualifications are not the key ingredient when Americans elect candidates. But we can still look at why he was the one that was chosen over someone who is clearly more experienced than he. Now, some people will say, you know, I liked his politics and policy ideas better than the other one. I don't buy that. And, and I'll just point to the fact that statistics throughout the first five or six years of his presidency said so many Americans disagreed with his politics. How does this work? Well, the answer is a good instruction for you as an interviewer. And that is, they liked him personally, even if they disagreed with him. And they voted for him because they liked him. As we even look at the current election, the way the campaigning is being done is, vote for me, you hate that guy, and you should dislike that guy a lot. I'm not mentioning names, it's irrelevant to the equation. Because the key missing ingredient for most of you is that you're only selling yourself for your competence. And competence is only one variable in the equation. There is still likability. Sometimes firms refer to that as chemistry. I'll call it likability because that's the marketing term, the advertiser term for it. You want to appear likable to the audience. Now, sometimes this can get tricky because you know, fit, chemistry, things like that are rife with the opportunity for bias. And I, I work on employers about that all the time. But for you as the job hunter, you cannot come across as adversarial. You cannot come across as being professional, unless that's the quality you believe that they're going to like. Most of the time, a smile, some personality, some off-the-cuff remarks that don't sound scripted where you can connect with the interviewer goes so far in getting you hired. So, again, learn the lesson from presidential politics. Likeability is a huge variable in why people are chosen. And by the way, if we look back in time, Governor Clinton became President Clinton because people liked him more than the incumbent president. Ronald Reagan. Ronald Reagan, you know, at the time he ran for office, he was not the Ronald Reagan that became the symbol of the Republican Party. But he was someone that people liked and make, made himself likable in the debates with certain off-the-cuff remarks that he made. You know, Americans related to him. Again, likability. Look for ways that people will enjoy you, like you, and then want to be around you more. Have a great day.